Hello there. So the video I was going to film this week, I'm not filming because my Mac laptop that I do all my video editing in has been sent to the Apple store to be repaired. I'll just tell you about that. But firstly, um, that means I've got no way of editing my videos. And that means I've got to film this in one take, really. So you'll get to see all the mistakes I make. Be fun to watch. It'll pad out the video, that's for sure. I didn't intend to make this video, which is really going to be a kind of what I've done in my home video for a quite a while. But, you know, to kind of keep you entertained, I thought I should just give you something. So I'm sure you'll, you can see in the background, things are kind of looking all right, I think. Um, anyway, my Mac laptop, for years now, the space bar's been acting up. Um, basically, you press the space bar and it either doesn't work or it does two or three spaces, which let me tell you, is slightly annoying when you're typing something. And after probably a year and a half, two years of that, I eventually got sick of it um, and thought, right, I'll lift the space bar up, see if there's any gunk in it or anything that I can scrape out and it'll make it work. Well, I did that and I made it worse, actually. Afterwards, I looked it up on the internet and it's a well-known problem with um, this particular generation, 2018, Apple MacBook Pro. Uh, so essentially, Apple will replace it under warranty. So I took it to the Apple store on Sunday and they said, yeah, we'll fix it for you free of charge. It's, the repair is 500 quid um, and they're going to send it off. It takes a week to be repaired and then they post it back to me. As a slight aside, obviously, I'm extremely happy that they're going to repair this four years after I bought the laptop. And they did actually say that the warranty is four years, so I didn't have much longer to get it done, really. Um, it sounds a bit petty, but I'm a little bit annoyed they didn't apologise or acknowledge that it's a known fault. Um, they just kind of took it and said they'll repair it, which, you know, so I kind of I am being a bit picky. Anyway, that'll come back and I'll be able to edit the video I was actually going to film this weekend. Um, but so let me just show you what I've done, because I think quite a lot has been done since I last um, showed you. So the lounge is finished now. We've got the green, we've got the stuff in. Um, and I think with the furniture in here and the, the kind of plant and stuff and with the lights. In fact, let me just turn these lights on because I think it'll make it look pretty nice. I love these um, half moon lights. I think it looks really homely and nice. I think it's much better than I'd actually imagined it would be and it, replacement light on the ceiling as well. I think it's really nice. Somebody asked me in one of my videos and I forgot to reply to them. Uh, they said they like the floor. What is it? Because it looks like real wood. Yeah, it does kind of look like real wood. It is Acacia. Well, just look up Acacia on the Wix website. And um, it's not one of their most expensive. It's also not one of their cheapest. It's like £21 a pack or something. Um, it's not great because some of the bits of wood are a little bit warped. So you have to kind of work with it a bit. Um, but now that it's down, I'm very happy with it. So that's this room. Um, actually, you can see there, there's the door that I will have to paint uh, with clear glass panels. The 70s door is gone. And the original 70s, um, what, not frosted, but sort of patterned glass panels that were separated there, there were three panels, have now been replaced with these slightly more modern clear glass panels. That cost me about 350 quid or something. Um, I think it looks quite good. I've got to paint them, I've got to sand them and paint them. Um, the door is going to open in a different way. The door used to open into the room this way, I don't know if you can see what I'm talking about. It's now going to open this way, which is more normal, but the light switch is here, so technically you should move it. I'm not going to do that. I can't be bothered with that. It's it's fine. It's not it's not a problem. The reason it's got to be moved is um, a little bit annoying, but the glazier was like, oh yeah, after he'd done it, now this pillar isn't supported, so it wouldn't be a good idea to hang a door from it. Great. Um, but... I'm not bothered. I think that'll be all right. And in terms of door handles and stuff, hardware, we've we've been quite good. That's a, let's see if we go. That's a mistake that I would cut out. We, we bought we bought the doors. Two of them have been fitted. Here they are. Here's one of them. It's just the kind of standard new build door that a lot of people have with these sort of brushed handles, brushed metal handles. Um, 
close really nicely. Uh, and they're kind of, I've designed them, I chose them, we chose them to match these um, light fittings, which they do fairly well. Nice lock on there in case a burglar comes in. But of course, if a burglar's got a, a uh, coin or a screwdriver, they can just help themselves anyway. Um, so we've got two of these doors installed. The other ones will be coming, uh, the other ones will be installed in a few weeks' time, hopefully, with, from my carpenter friend. Um, he's going to do the lounge door, the other two bedrooms, and also the fire door in the kitchen. These doors, as I think I probably told you, got to wait a bit longer because the bathroom's got to be done. I'll talk about the bathroom last. Need your ideas. If any of you are uh, plumbers, let me know. Oh, let's just shut this door in here. So, oh, well, do you remember this was a mess, this wall here? Uh, all the wallpaper that I had scraped off it? Well... I finally put a piece of lining paper up there and filled and sanded the gap, the very slight gap, because it turns out that the wallpaper, the original wallpaper was quite bowed, so it wouldn't just kind of butt up right against it. Um, I'm quite happy with it. I might sand it a little bit more of those edges because I want it to be as smooth as possible. Uh, but that certainly looks a lot better than a bloody great mess of half wallpapered wall, doesn't it? You know, it's really, you can tell when it's actually all been painted properly and the woodwork's not yellow, it's it's gloss white. Uh, it'll look pretty first class, I hope. He said, um, you know, kind of modestly. So do you remember there were some holes up there? I filled them, gonna have only filled them, filled them twice and I'm gonna fill them once more just to, because I mean, there's a couple of tiny gaps and things in there. I thought it just looked better without holes up there. And before anybody tells me that, Oh, you need those holes for air circulation because it's an airing cupboard. I'm not going to be putting any wet towels or anything in there. And to be honest, I had... Is it raining? To be honest, I had um, an old airing cupboard at my old place that didn't have any hot air holes in it. And it was never a problem. There was no mould or anything. It just looked better without awful 70s holes up there. And glass would have been a bit stupid because, well, you know... Why, why do you want to look into the top of the airing cupboard? Uh, what else? Oh, this is really boring. This is something that I would film and then cut out later. I've um, put my Apple Airport Extreme back down there because I've started backing up my laptop, which I needed to do. That was actually, that's a long story, long, boring story, but I failed to do the backup, the proper time machine backup. I, I left it like two hours and it transferred one megabyte. Christ, it is so awful. Um, my central heating, the new Tado central heating, I'm really gutted, actually, as you can probably have guessed, that my Tado review, which took me hours to film and cost the company that sent me that stuff hundreds and hundreds of quid, has got like 800 views. So it's part of a continued decline <laughs> of um, video views. I do want to discuss this in detail with you. Um, and that this was essentially going to be kind of the video I was going to film at the weekend, but it was going to be different to usual. It wasn't just going to be my channels dying. It was kind of going to be, um, I don't watch, I don't really know what it was going to be. It was going to be an evaluation. I suppose it was going to be my channels dying, really. It was going to be an evaluation of the stats on my channel over the years because my views are much lower than they were in 2016. My views are about the same, actually. And let's see, I would have cut out there. My views are about the same as they were in 2016 when I essentially started the channel. So things have got that bad. But crucially, the revenue that the channel is making is much, much higher than it was then. So that's good in one sense, um, but it's kind of part of a continued decline and I suppose I, I do want to save this for when I actually do film the video but I'm not after suggestions and I know that seems really ungrateful and kind of like I'm closed-minded about the whole thing but I just I don't need suggestions on things to film on the channel I don't need to be told that you know not a lot of you do this there are only a handful of people that do this most of you are, are great and just put up with, you know, what I put out, even when it is crap. Um, 
but I don't need to be told that, you know, the quality of the stuff isn't so good anymore because I know that the quality of the stuff is better than it was those years ago because I can go back and watch those videos and see that they were crap. Um, and essentially, I mean, this is just a kind of precede version of the video I was going to film. I have come to the conclusion, as I think I have several times before, and possibly I just keep forgetting because of my early onset Alzheimer's, which I don't have as a bad joke, really, which I would have probably cut out. Um, I... Oh, see, this, uh, there's times when I think as well like this, where I have to think of what I was going to say. Um, yeah, I've come to the conclusion that, like... I spent ages trying to build a subscriber base on this channel because I thought that's what I needed to do to grow the channel to have huge success. And for a while, that kind of worked in certain niches like Lego. Like I built a Lego niche and I consistently get like five or 6,000 views per video. And if I made a really good video, I'd get like 20 or 30,000 views. Um, and then occasionally I just upload a weird sort of DIY kind of video and it would get tens, is it raining out? Okay, just checking. Um, let me just turn the outside light on. Yeah, I'd get sort of tens of thousands of views. I think the algorithm has kind of changed. And I think now it really favours like if you've got a lot of subscribers if your subscribers don't watch your videos then youtube isn't going to promote it to anyone um and that's a problem because i want to upload diverse content and the current model doesn't seem to um support that people like atomic shrimp manage it uh because his videos are really kind of carefully planned and actually his and and carefully and well executed and part of his kind of char the character of his channel is the diversity. I do suspect he's probably suffering, maybe disagree, but I suspect he probably is suffering in some ways. Like if he did stick to one or two niches that were closely related, he might get more views than he actually gets. Because I noticed he does upload the odd video that gets many, many thousands of less views. And I just don't think that seems to be good for the algorithm. So in the short term, it feels like I'm making a mistake doing DIY videos and reviews of products. And I will get a lot of comments, I'm sure, saying, I didn't come to the channel for this. Uh, this isn't your best stuff. I, this is boring. YouTube might penalize me and not show my video to new people because my subscribers aren't watching it. But I'm gambling at this point because I feel like actually doing those kind of videos is going back to the roots of the channel a little bit. And you kind of can't stop, the I hope, the cream from rising to the top. As in, that's not a bigot, that's not a, a boastful statement. What I'm trying to say is if I, if I make videos that provide education or uh, value to people, give somebody some information that they that they need that isn't available elsewhere or isn't available in as an accessible a format as my video, then that video will be searched, will be viewed, and over the course of time, it will rank more on uh, YouTube and it will get views. So. I can still go, and this is maybe something I would like to try and include in that video that I'll hopefully film next weekend. I can still find videos from last year that YouTube has initially said, no, we're not, you, your subscribers aren't watching it, we're not going to show it to anyone. And then a year and a bit later, its trajectory changes and it starts ranking for certain YouTube keywords. We're not talking insane numbers here because the channel is very slow we're talking about sort of late 70 early 80,000 views um, a month down from over well over 200,000 views a month um, but this is just my gamble because I've now been doing the same thing since 2019 trying to kind of build an audience around my personality which I'll probably still try and do 
to some extent, um, and film videos about my life and what I'm doing, and they are of interest to approximately 2,000 of my subscribers, um, probably more, but YouTube doesn't show uh, videos to all of your subscribers, which is something that we've known for a long time as creators on YouTube. But that just isn't, doesn't seem to be a, an avenue to any great growth on YouTube or even any great income, particularly. So that's what I'm trying to do. And I might try and formulate this a little bit better so that it's a bit more coherent when I film that video next weekend. Um, but I'm just trying to film videos, essentially, that provide some value to people. Still going to do the odd sort of house video because they're easy to film. I enjoy looking back on them and I know some of you like them. Crucially, actually, this is something new since last time and I will get back to the tour. There's not that much more to say really about it. Um, but I'm going to centre parks in the summer. So that's fantastic. The price of it's 250 quid more than it was two years ago when I went, which I'm slightly disappointed about. You know, I've got some of the most some of the most viewed Centre Parks videos, yet Centre Parks never deems it um, appropriate to give me a free stay. Oh, that sounds that sounds really wrong, doesn't it? Yeah, well, I mean, I have paid, I must have spent, I've spent thousands at Centre Parks, and, you know, uh, there are companies that I've, like, talked about some odd thing, and then they've just, you know, vaguely related to their product, and they've sent me a free thing, but not Centre Parks. Uh, and on the topic of Centre Parks and cost, find a discount card or a um, discount code or something for centre box you won't you just can't get uh, any money off i can hear is it raining out or is it just something banging against the door it sounds very maybe it's haunted i don't know um right i'll i'll just get on with the last couple of things i'll try and make this only 20 minutes long okay <laughs> okay so one thing i've done do you remember there was you probably don't there was an old alarm up there I bought these great um, Jiprock plasterboard patches that you stick over the hole and then you sort of, you're meant to put plaster over, but I put smooth filler and it seems to have worked. Sanded it down. <laughs> Happy with that. Looks really good. I think it's that bit of paper banging on the door. Um, I have, I was going to try and buy replacement architrave for this um, because it's like this, but kind of chipped. And it turns out that it's not a standard size and it's not just a rectangular piece of wood. So I've taken off the old piece of architrave. I'm going to strip it and then repaint it. And the electrician that I'm using at the moment, uh, he's going to come and uh, chase this into the wall and chase a cable up there as well. But he just had a kid, so uh, he's kind of a bit busy at the moment. Uh, anything in here? Oh, I tried to take that UPVC window out. Let me show you. Tried to take this out, had a special tool, and now I've um, sort of uh, damaged the UPVC frame. Not terribly, but essentially, I think it's not one of these ones where you jam in something and lever it out, because I couldn't have jammed that in anymore. I think it's one where there's possibly some kind of, um, kind of, I was going to say gator, that's not right. Some kind of plastic, some kind of rubber seal on the outside and you have to remove that first. If you've got any idea what I'm talking about or know how to do it, please let me know. Final thing on bathroom here. So we're going through, this is very stressful. Um, I don't know how, we, well, we will. We will find the things that we need. I think we'll agree, Ellie and I will agree on the style of things. It's the practical implementation that's, stressing me out. So at the moment, we've got bath, sink, toilet. May keep that arrangement with that being a shower. But if we do, we want a walk-in shower. So that's going to be no good where it is. The walk-in bit's going to have to be this end. Um, and we'll have to put the shower on the other side, which is going to be a bit of a hassle for the plumber and an expense. Or we move the, which is also an expense, we move the um, toilet to this wall, we move the sink to there. So basically, essentially, this wall has the sink and the um, toilet bit on. I've got some plans for this that I could show you, but I don't know how I'm going to put them on because 
well, I can't really, can I? Maybe I'll leave a link to them, I don't know. Or maybe we'll do it properly another day. Um, so do that there, and then we can retain the entrance to the shower being um, that end, where are with the doors in the way, that end and the shower currently where it is. So that's kind of, that's a design decision that sort of needs to be made. The issue with that is that this room is 160 centimetres, 165 centimetres wide. Um, that noise really is very disconcerting. A, a piece of paper rattling on the door sounds like somebody sort of sitting at it. Anyway, um, yeah, like 165 centimetres in this dimension. Uh, we want a floor plan, we want a, a shower, what they call tray, that spans the length of the room. The sizes that they do are 160 centimetres and 170 centimetres. So obviously if it's too long, it won't fit in the room. Um, and if it's too short, then there's a gap. So what is the way around that? Um, online, I've seen you kind of pad the wall out. Well, I'd lose five centimetres of room. It seems like a bit extreme, really. Even with the thicker tiles, you know, bigger, thicker tiles, it's still five centimetres I'd have to lose in this room. Um, yeah, or is there, why isn't there just a simple kit that extends a shower tray? Uh, or maybe they can build, maybe the plumber can build, like a, or the carpenter can build like a plinth or something, I don't know. There must be something you can do, but that at the moment is proving to be the difficult thing. How do you get one to fit this room? Um, and interestingly, this is what you shouldn't do. This is a 170 um, centimetre bath that actually, if you kind of look through that hole in there, the bath actually goes into the wall by several centimetres to make it fit in the room, which is not, as I understand, appropriate for modern building regulations. So anyway, if you've got any ideas about that, please let me know, because that would, whoa, that'd help me out. I'd have edited that out probably, and the girly scream. Anyway, I hope that's been interesting to you. Thank you to my loyal patrons, including George Foot, Magnanimous Meg, Jennifer Jones, and Rob Van Eden, who are very generous patrons, and all my other patrons, patrons who are scrolling down the screen now. Uh, thanks for watching this extended video. Let's do a thumbnail. Uh, I, I can't do a thumbnail. Oh, I really need to shave. I look appalling. <sighs> Goodbye.